Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Steve DeCasa. Uh, this is a 60D, and just a warning, the beginning of this video is just going to be a lot of talking and demonstrating, so if you want to get right to the breaking it down like it says in the title of this video, then skip ahead to here, and then that's where I will finally start tearing it down. But first, I'm just going to start with the story up to this point. So I acquired this 60D from a friend. Um, it is not working. And you might be asking yourself, why would you want a 60D in this day and age when there's so many better cameras out there? Well, I wanted a 60D because I want to use it for streaming. I want to use it as a webcam. And if you didn't know, Canon released a software called EOS webcam utility it's a software for pc and i think it, you can get it for mac now too but basically what's really cool about the software is using just the usb port not the hdmi but using just the usb port on these cameras your computer will recognize it as a webcam now why the 60d well i already own a 5d mark ii and it uses the same battery which is really cool so i wouldn't need to get any more batteries i could use the batteries i already own and why this kind of dslr well i own lots of canon cameras and i have a lot of ef lenses that i could use for it so it just seemed like a great idea to use a 60d for one of the webcam not every canon camera is compatible with the webcam software at least not yet but the 60d was one of them so after looking around on ebay and things like that i realized that a friend of mine had one now she said that it didn't work and so i was like oh okay well it doesn't work well let me let me grab it and from you and if i can get it working i'll i'll buy it from you so of course i googled 60d doesn't turn on and the first thing you find is a little trick that the camera can do to reset itself it sort of does like a little software reset so of course that's the first thing i did and let me just show you that it doesn't work <laughs> So what you're supposed to do is, you're, if you have a battery in it, you're actually supposed to take the battery out of the camera. So that's right, no battery in the camera for this trick. Then you're supposed to put it on the P setting up here, set it to P, and then what you're supposed to do is just hold the shutter button down for like 15 seconds. I've seen 10 seconds, I've seen 15 seconds, I've seen 30 seconds to hold this down. And once again, no battery in here. So let's give it a shot. One thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, fourteen. Fit well. There's fifteen. Nineteen. We're going on twenty seconds here. Twenty-nine, thirty. Well, we're now we're past thirty seconds, and you can see nothing's happening. Thing is not turning on. Now, some other people have noticed that there is a little latch here in the battery compartment. You can see there's a little latch right there. Now, when you close the battery door, a little nubbin right here goes into that recess and depresses a little switch right there. That's how the camera knows that the battery door is closed. So I figured, well, OK, maybe the latch is broken. So I took a little tweezer. I reached inside here and I held the switch down. I'm seeing it down. And now I know it's down and I'm doing the shutter button. Now this is very tricky to do, but uh, I'm doing it again. I'm, I'm holding it down again. So let's see if it lights up. That's about 15 seconds. This is very awkward to hold. Basically, nothing's happening. What's supposed to happen, I believe, is this is supposed to light up. Then after it lights up, you put a battery in and it'll start up again. So I've <laughs> ruled out the shutter button thing. I've ruled out the latch on the battery thing. So I'm left with nothing but theories because I can tell you at this point, this is the whole reason why I'm making this video. At this point, there is no help online. So I'm hoping this video will help people who are at this same point with this camera. Um, now, once again, it's a pretty esoteric camera, but if you're in a situation like me, it's kind of perfect for what I want to do and there's really no help out there. So I'm a bit of a tinkerer. I like to take things apart. I've repaired a few things in the past. I've repaired PS4 controllers and I've cleaned out whole PS4s and stuff. So I'm a tinkerer. I have a list of little space set up and I've got all the little tools and stuff. So I figured, you know, let me see if I can try and repair this thing. So let me tell you where I'm at with my theory right now and what I'm planning to do. When I first heard about the trick where you reset the camera and it says the step one is to take the battery out, and then you hold the thing down and it's supposed to light up. I thought to myself, well, there has to be some sort of power 
inside the camera <laughs> how else could the lcd turn on and any kind of things could happen how could how else could anything in this camera happen if it didn't have some sort of power source so i figured there must be some sort of watch battery or some sort of little internal battery in the camera and it turns out there is so i researched how to take the internal batteries out of cameras now the 7d and the 5d and a couple of the other eos cameras have a nice easy way to take the watch battery out you open up a little compartment maybe it's one screw and a little slot comes out you don't have to do anything too crazy not with the stupid 60d apparently the 60d watch battery is there's no way to get to it until unless you disassemble this thing so i'm assuming that battery is dead so i've done exhaustive research and i've discovered that yes the camera uses that internal battery to do the reset i also know that the internal battery is a rechargeable lithium three volt if it goes down if the voltage goes down and it starts to die it actually recharges itself by using the battery that you would put into it so upon finding this out i put the battery in it i turned it on and uh, and also as you can see it's not powering up with the battery in it i don't know if i actually demonstrated that but i put the bat a charge battery in it i put it on and i just let it sit there for a day hoping that the that the internal battery would suck some juice out of the secondary battery or the main battery i should say and charge it enough to reset i think I've proved that that didn't work because I just did the reset and it didn't work. So my plan is to now disassemble this camera enough to get to that watch battery. I have no idea if that's actually going to fix it. <laughs> I'm assuming that that battery is dead. And the only reason why this camera is not doing the reset is because the internal battery is dead. Um, so that's my plan. Now I went to the micro center near me. A, a micro center, if you don't know, is a big electronics store. And I picked up a couple of watch batteries. Um, they did not have the type of battery that this has. And by the way, researching the battery in this was extremely difficult. I'll put a link in the description, the PDF that I found, which is a parts list of this camera. And it mentions the battery part in it. And when you search that part across the internet, you get all sorts of weird things. And it's not a typical battery, but it is a particular size. It's 6.8 millimeters diameter by 2.15 millimeters thickness. It is a three volt rechargeable lithium battery. Now I found this one, which is not a rechargeable, but it is a lithium three volt battery, which apparently is too big. And then I found this type of battery, which is a 1.5 volt, which is a little too small. I was thinking maybe I could solder them together to make a three volt, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. When we get in there and I take the battery out and I test its voltage, if it's three volts, then I don't know what to do. If it's dead, then I'm either going to try to put three volts on using the battery, or I actually have a power supply over here, a variable power supply that I could potentially, if I can find the pins, potentially supply three volts directly to the board without having to use the battery. And that way, maybe I can try and restart the camera. But I think it's probably more beneficial to get the battery in there at least long enough to try to do the reset and then figure it out from there. That's where I'm at with my plan. This plan would not be possible if it wasn't for one guy named Robert Hosea. You might have noticed this piece of paper over here. I've taped it down. Um, this is a little diagram showing all of the screws. Mr. Hosea made this because he is a 60D enthusiast and he has a series of videos online, which I'll put the link in the description, where he breaks apart the camera much more than I'm going to. I'm only trying to get far enough to get to that watch battery. But he made this little diagram and he suggests putting double-sided tape, which I did, on the diagram. So when I take off each screw, I'm going to place each screw exactly where it needs to go. I also have out of frame my laptop over here uh, watching his videos as I go. So I just want to say a big thank you to Mr. Hosea, Mr. Robert Hosea, for making those videos and helping me out. He actually answered a bunch of my uh, comments. I would comment on the videos and I think they're like two years old or something. Yeah, these videos are from 2017 and he's still commenting and replying on them. So yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that some people are going to have this problem as well. There is very scarce, scant 
amount of information out there about the actual watch battery. There's no good, clear shots of it. Even in Mr. Jose's video, he never really he he decide, di, he dissects the camera and he gets near it, but he never like zooms in on it and really shows it off. It's just there in the background as he's moving, and I'm just like, I want to see it. So for this video, I'm going to show you where it is, how to get to it. I'm going to get a nice clean shot of it, test it, and we're really going to figure out how to replace that battery. I have not opened it up yet. I'm on, I'm doing this as I film it. So we might run into some snags. We, this might take a day or two, but that's the plan. I'm going on a journey. I have not done this yet, and this is the first time I'm dissecting any kind of camera, and I will be watching Mr. Hosea's video as I go. So uh, wish me luck, and here we go. So for this video, I'm not going to get really, really in-depth into how to take it apart and show you every single screw. If you really want to see like a really nice teardown, click the link in the description to Mr. Hosea's videos where he goes through everything in really close detail. I'll do it as good as I can, but, you know, his is better. <laughs> I guess really quick before I continue any further, I kind of wanted to plug iFixit. Now, this is not sponsored by them, but as a tinkerer, I really like having the right tools for the job. And I also really like this company's sort of mantra, which is we should have the right to repair everything we own. And I sprung for the $75 big boy kit. So this kit is really cool. So it has all of these little tools here for prying things. They really make stuff to like repair your iPhones and stuff. It has like little like almost guitar pick things, a suction cup to pull glass off of a thing. It is really cool. I can't recommend this enough. There's a magnetized sort of tray here, which is amazing. This is to keep all your screws and stuff, but I have that. And then it has all these really dope bits. For this one, I think we just need the smallest um, Phillips head that I have, which according to this is a J000. That's what this says, J000. It's the smallest Phillips head in this kit. It's pretty damn small. Mr. Jose also recommends a little flathead uh, screwdriver to do some prying, but I have a couple of tools here that I really like. There's this one, which can sort of get in, into places, and there's this plastic one here. Hopefully these will do the job. I'll just keep these out for now. And if I need to come back into here to grab anything else, I will. I literally have Rob Hosea's video playing in the background. So I'm literally just hitting play on his, watching it for a bit, and then going into this tutorial. So, so the first thing is to take the memory card out, which I did, and the battery out, which I've done. This door actually does come off as well. You just kind of pop it out like that. I'll try to get a better shot for you. Now, as I go through this afterwards, I'm probably going to realize that there are a few screws I maybe didn't need to take out, but it is what it is right now. So next thing you want to do is remove the eye cup that goes over the um, viewfinder. It's a little dirty, as you can see. <laughs> and look, that reveals some screws. He also uses gloves in his video, and I'm not, so hopefully I don't fry my board by shocking it with static shock. That would suck. Okay, now comes kind of what I feel like is going to be one of the trickiest parts, especially to put back on, and that's removing these rubber grips right here. I'm really nervous to get them back on, so we'll see how this works. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of those little tools and I'm going to kind of work at the edge until I can get it up enough so I can grab it. Okay, the plastic pieces are a little too finicky. There we go, this metal one. Oh yeah, look at that, yeah. All right, well, hopefully I can get this thing back on. Looks sticky enough. Let's do this one now. Ooh, okay. 
To me, that was one of the scariest parts. Hopefully I can get them back on. All right, so now we have a naked 60D. Okay, we're gonna go to the bottom of the camera. According to the diagram, there's five screws here and one right there, and I'm going to meticulously take them out and place them on the little piece of paper there. So here we go. Oh, by the way, this is magnetized, which is amazing. Believe it or not, I don't know if you could tell, there's actually a little something stuck in the hole of this screw. It's not allowing my screwdriver to get in there. Uh, it looks like a grain of sand or something. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is grab a like a sewing needle and try to just poke that out. Okay, I grabbed a sewing needle. I'm going to try to pry this out of here. Doing a little compressed air off camera because I don't want to blow any screws around. All right. Oh yeah, that did it. Nice. Okay, now on to the left edge of the camera. I guess if you're looking at it this way, it's the left edge. Uh, there's one screw underneath this little plastic panel here and one, two, three more. Okay, here comes the tricky part. This cover has got to come off. You want to kind of get up under here. Like that. It's actually a little thick for this. I should probably go find something a little bit better. There we go. And apparently this might be a little tricky because this little plastic thing can get caught. Oh, I see why. Okay, here, we'll check this out. Let's see if I can use this flashlight to show you. See that little catch there? See how that's catching right there? That's what'll happen. So what you do is you kind of slide it out of the way like that, and you can see how it's catching. And she's a little more naked. Eee. Okay, now we're going to this side for these screws. Four of them. Let me just also do a little, just praising for Hosea's diagrams here. I mean, what a brilliant system. I'm just putting the screws right on their place with the double-sided tape. Now we're gonna get rid of these three screws by the viewfinder and also the screw in the uh, diopter. I believe that is called the diopter. I'm like 50% sure. <laughs> crazy the different lengths of each screw. You never would be able to put this back together without some sort of system. I'm just going to put this whole contraption wheel and all face down. Now as I said before, I'm literally just following along with the Hosea tutorial. So he kind of skips this screw for now and these screws here and he goes around to the front. So that's what I'm going to do right now. There's four screws here to remove. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now we're back to the back. Now's the time to do these one, two, and three. Oh, these are tiny. Oh, 
Okay, now I should be able to lift this piece off here, but it seems to be pretty well sealed in there. This tool is way too thick for that. I busted out this kind of cool prying tool from the iFixit kit, but I don't think yeah, I can get in there. I think what I'm gonna try to do is use the Phillips tool itself to go into the screw hole and just sort of give it a little tilt to try to loosen it. Let's see if that works. Doesn't seem to be working. My one last thing I could try, now I wouldn't recommend this, but is a um, X-Acto knife. Now obviously with an X-Acto knife you could scratch your stuff. But I see a place where I'm gonna try to infiltrate. Right in there. There's that little seam. I'm gonna try to get the X-Acto knife in there. That's this, the place where it seems the most open. Yeah. I was just able to pry it up enough. There we go. So I was able to get the exacto blade in there just enough to get my pinpoint tweezers in there to take it off. This is the piece here. And I don't even know if I needed to take that off, but we shall see. I'm at the point in the tutorial now where he takes this back cover off. That's where the battery is, or at least there's one more cable underneath it. So we're almost there. We are almost there. He suggests using a small screwdriver. I have succumbed and I took out this bit. This isn't actually the smallest bit. Not only is this not the smallest flathead, it's the third smallest one. So it's the smallest, then the next one, and then there's this one. So this one's, I would say, a medium in the iFixit kit. Look at the difference. Here's the smallest one. There's the difference between the third one up and the smallest one. Crazy. Okay, so here we go. I'm less scared about this. I think we should be good. So we're supposed to take that tool Get it in here and just lift up a little bit. He said that's all you need. Great. Don't yank too much because there is a cable that's connected that we're gonna have to disconnect. Said also that like I might have to move this around to like lift this up. So let's. This is definitely not as easy as he made it look. I almost feel like I'm... I almost feel like I have missed a screw or something. It feels really tight. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's there. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. It just it just needs a little loving. Okay, using. Okay, here we go. Nice. Okay. Now there should be a little cable right here. Apparently, you just lift up on this. Boom. Okay. Nice, very nice. I never did screws on the top, it seems. Yeah, I never did. I don't think I need to, so that's cool. I'm realizing that there's a whole diagram up there with no screws on it. Okay, we're very close to the battery. The battery, I can see it, it's right there, but I don't wanna investigate yet. What I'm gonna do is get rid of this cable first. So in the video, he now removes the front part. I don't need to do that. So if you wanna continue disassembling, feel free and watch his video, link in the description. I'm pretty much stopping here except for this cable. Okay, so we should be able to take this is the connector here. We should be able to lift it up. I really wish I could ground myself. Boom. There's the stinking battery. I'm just gonna use some electrical tape to tape this to the LCD to get it out of the way. 
Now this might be the first footage ever of a 60D internal battery. Here you go. There it is. Sorry, this is as close as I can get with this lens. It says on it, it's like an X and then M S six one four S E M S six one four S E. That's what it says along the outer edge on the top middle. It says a Roman numeral two and then S I I S or it's a S I I not sure. And the numbers in the middle say one seven eight one. 1781. There it is. I'm going to actually switch to the smallest bit to get up underneath this guy and pry it out. So here's the other battery I got. This is the three volt one. Mm, it's a little big. <laughs> here's the 1.5 volt one I got. It's pretty good, except this is 1.5 volts and this is three. So I'm gonna need two of them stacked together. Who knows if that'll even work. <laughs> we'll see what happens. First thing, we want to do is I want to test the voltage on this. It should be three. So I'm using a little helping hand here to hold the battery on its edge. I'm afraid of holding it from the other side in case it shorts it. Putting my multimeter to voltage DC. Here we go. 2.5 volts, 2.5 volts. So it's not completely dead, but it's not three. And with a load, which how much of a load could it possibly be to reset the camera? But 2.5 volts, I feel like that should be good enough, but maybe it's not it's just a half a volt, really? But I guess, like I said, with a load, it would it would be, it'd be more demanding. 2.5, hmm. I can't tell if this is a bad sign or a good sign. I think it's a bad sign. I'm actually gonna put the battery back in and try to probe it while it's in this little holder here. I mean, once you get to it, it's pretty easy. So let me see if I can probe it while it's in here. I mean, I have it backwards, but 2.5 volts. While I have this off, I'm investigating this little switch here. I can now see from the inside whether or not this latch presses down on the battery. There's the switch. And it seems to that's about as far down as I can get the battery. Looks pretty good. But I definitely, with a tweezer, can push it down more. I don't know if you can tell the difference. So I guess what I'm going to try is, with a 2.5 volt battery in there, I'm going to put this connector back on. I'm going to put a full battery in. Make sure I'm not on. I was on that whole time. I'm going to put the full battery in. I am going to depress the switch fully now that I have it open and see if I can turn it on. It's going to be a little tough to do. All right, that's with the switch fully down. Nothing. Okay, that rules out that. <laughs> okay. Now, 
I'm going to try the the shutter button test while pressing this down all the way. Now you're supposed to have this on P. You're supposed to press this down. You're supposed to turn it on and hold the shutter button. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so now comes the challenge of trying to supply this thing with three volts so I can try that test again. Let me think about that. I remembered from watching one of the videos that there's a switch here that knows when the cover's on. So I stuck a piece of paper in there to bypass that switch and I tried the thing again where I hold the battery button down and then turned it on with a battery in it. Did not work. So I'm going to try the reset again with the 2.5 volts in there and just being able to hold this. I want to rule out this switch here, so I'm just going to hold it down as much as I can. We're on P, we're on, and we're holding the shutter button down. Yeah, okay. So I think I can rule out the battery door button. Still trying to figure out how to get three volts here. Getting there. So I'm using my bench power supply to try and charge the battery. You can see over there that I'm supplying eight volts because that's what the battery has when you put it in. Now notice when I short the leads, you can see it draws an amp for a minute, for a second through the thing. But as I charge the battery, you can see there's no current at all, yet I did this for about 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds, then I took a multimeter reading, and it was reading 2.8 volts, not 2.5, so I must be charging it. So I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to charge this, even though there says there's no amps running through it. Maybe it's just too low to, to show on there. I'm trying also not to explode the battery. What I'm trying to do is actually charge this battery up to 3 volts, maybe 3.2, something like that. It's temporary, probably. It will probably discharge pretty quickly. But if I can get it up to 3 volts, I can try to do the reset again. So there's a little bit there. Don't short. Don't short. <laughs> Let me shut this off just in case. Let me take the multimeter reading. 3.3. Okay, so it did manage to charge, but you can see it's rapidly going down. So really quickly... Let me take the battery out, place it in here, reconnect this, this switch, I'm running out of time. Okay, that switch is bypassed. Let me just make a quick reading. Three volts, 3.1 volts. This latch is going to go down. Going on, we're at P, and one, one thousand, two, one thousand. Damn. Huh. The switch is depressed. This is bypassed. Let me check the voltage again on this. Three volts. Hmm. <laughs> Yep, I think that put the nail in the coffin. The 60D is not... My theory was wrong, basically. As far as I can tell, my theory was is wrong. It's holding pretty steady at 3 volts. I don't have any other ideas. Try to do it with that thing on there. Damn. Well, it's 1.30 in the morning, and my wife's trying to sleep. I'm at a loss right now. 
I guess I'll just uh, either I have two options either I give up put it all back together and give it back to my friend or I've come this far I'm thinking I might as well dissect it a little bit further watch a little bit more of Robert's videos to see the things that I could test to see whether or not it's just com a complete busted and dead power board I'd like to at least be able to diagnose the thing so that's it for now check well it's the next day but i actually think i'm just going to stop the video here this video was about finding the internal battery of the 6dd checking it and seeing if i could do the camera reset and i have accomplished the goal of finding it and attempting obviously it didn't reset the camera but the goal of the video has been achieved so i'm going to stop here i am going to keep working on it i'm going to use robert Hosea's video where he tests the power board. So I'm gonna determine whether or not it's the power board that's bad, probably is, but I'm gonna save that for another video and the link will be in the description once it goes up. So if you've watched this far, thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you again to Robert Hosea. Go check out his YouTube channel and happy filmmaking and happy photographing. <laughs> Peace.